Welcome to Inspiration Rising. My name is David Trotter, and I'm a transformation coach dedicated to inspiring women and the men who support them to rise up in life, love, and leadership. Today, I want to share with you an excerpt of my interview with Morgan Harper Nichols, who's cultivated a loyal following of over 1 million people on Instagram who enjoy her poetry and illustrations on a daily basis. She's the author of All Along You Were Blooming, Thoughts for Boundless Living, and the host of the Morgan Harper Nichols podcast. Her book is absolutely beautiful. It's full color. It is chock full of all of her poetry and illustrations, and I highly highly encourage you to pick it up. Now, the complete interview is part of a free online resource I've created for you called Cultivating Peace in Times of Dis-Ease. There are nine exclusive interviews with nine female thought leaders, including Morgan, who I asked to share their wisdom in response to the fear and anxiety of the coronavirus. You can access this free online resource at insporising.com slash peace. That's insporising.com slash peace. Now, for the first half of our conversation, I asked Morgan all about how she got started as a singer and songwriter, poet, and illustrator, and you definitely want to listen to that. But for this short excerpt that I'm sharing on the podcast, I asked her to read one of her poems from a recent Instagram post. I found it incredibly powerful and moving in this time that we're living. I want you to listen and see if it impacts you as much as it does me. There's a poem that you wrote several days ago um, that really touched me on uh, Instagram, Mm -hmm. Um, and it starts with the phrase, if you feel overwhelmed. And Mm. I ask you if you would be willing to read this to us. And I don't know if that's awkward to explain poetry, but I've got a couple Mm. of questions for you. Maybe just your heart behind behind it. Um, So would you mind reading it for us? Yeah, I I don't mind at all. If you feel overwhelmed by the fragility of it all and how everything could change, whether or not you have a say, I hope you know you are not alone in feeling this way. You are still within grace where there is room to feel. So feel, please feel, even if you do not know how the wounds will heal. You may not have answers for the shakiness, but this is also true. You are not alone in what you are going through. Even if everyone else seems calm and composed around you, turn to light and be reminded you do not have to carry these shadows on your own. You are allowed to have questions. You are allowed to wonder why. You are allowed to need peace at morning, 2 p.m. and midnight. Take a deep breath whenever you can. May the exhale give you the smallest sweet release amidst all you do not understand. Mm, Thank you. One of the themes as I've read um, your poetry, one of the themes that just radiates so beautifully is found in that first uh, section. I hope you know you are not alone. I mean, I feel like that's a theme of so much of what you write um, and you just mentioned to us earlier that you have felt alone um, mm-hmm. in different seasons of life. And uh, my guess is that all of us have at some point, but, you know, some of us experience that at a greater or lesser degree. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel like it's so important for people to know that they're not alone? Mm-hmm. I think, you know, thinking about the times that we're in right now where we have so many ways that are supposed to make us feel connected. People are just feeling increasingly more and more disconnected. Um, I'm 30 years old. And when I was 20 years old, that was the year that Instagram was launched. And I feel like in some ways I've kind of, you know, my adulthood has just been kind of associated with this whole, like trying to figure out who we are as, as brands and as people out there in the world with, followers and all of that. And, um, and I just find it very interesting that in my own life, even though I, I am surrounded by people who love me, you know, I have a loving husband, I have my sister, who's like, 
We're like best friends. We do so much together. My parents, like, and we have like real conversations. Like I have like a good group around me. I really do. And still, I feel like, oh my goodness, I'm the only one who deals with like, there's no one to talk to. And I'm just like, interestingly enough, I can't be the only one who feels that. (laughs) So it's like, even if we can't put language around like, why we feel this way, you know, because it's, it varies for everyone. Like some people may not have anyone in their life that they feel like they can talk to, like wherever you are on that spectrum. Like, I think that everybody has like just some sort of like question mark in their life of, of where do I fit? How do I fit in here? Um, whether it's on the forefront or in the back of their mind. So I think about that a lot, you know, <laughs> I just think about that a lot. And and what ends up happening is, you know, a lot of times um, I'll write and I end up scratching through a lot of things because I'm just like, and it comes back down to, we're not alone. Like, let's just start there. You know, mm-hmm. let, let me not try to solve all of it. Maybe just being together and, and finding ways to be present with one another. Like, maybe that's the start. And maybe it's a really big, important start and a big step. So. I try to create that for people with art and poetry, um, you know, just because I, I know for me in my life, like I've, I have felt less alone in, in hearing really vulnerable song lyrics. I have felt less alone in, in certain movie quotes and, you know, just things that on the surface is like, oh, they may seem like small things, but, you know, I, I do think that, that music and art can be a way that helps people feel a little less alone. So mm-hmm. that's, that is my goal. So it's a theme. It's def- yeah, you're right. It's definitely a theme that shows up a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, it, it seems like even that concept of that we're here together is powerful, not only in the context of emotions, because that's a lot or pain brokenness, mm-hmm. which is a lot of what you're talking about, but also in terms of the, um, divide that we have in especially the United States, whether it's political or economic, mm-hmm. uh, socioeconomic, education, ethnicity, um, LGBTQ issues, you know, there's mm-hmm. such a, there can be such a schism in all of those ways mm-hmm. that if there's somehow even um, in knowing that we're not alone, that um, there's more uh, there's more alike among us than different, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, does absolutely. that resonate with you at all? Or Yes. Yes. I, the thing that I shared today, I'm, I'm looking now, I think it ends with saying, um, yeah, we are connected in more ways than we know. Um, that was the last thing I shared today. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> because I, I believe that wholeheartedly. And, and this project of writing people's stories has, taught me that um there have been times where i I've, I've opened up messages from people and i read their words and it just like hits me right in my chest and i'm like i have felt every single thing that you're saying and then i click on their profile picture and they live in a completely different part of the world they're different age completely different life in every single capacity so that has that has humbled me a lot because i think in in a lot of ways like and I'm not going to speak for anyone for myself, but myself here. But in a lot of ways, my sort of like, I'm the only one, like it can be associated with pride and this That's just true. really unhealthy, like individual mindset of like, it's just me against the world. And it's like, no, it's not. It's, it's never been that way. It's never been that way. I know it feels that way. I know you feel like you have to do it all on your, on your own and conquer everything. And it's up to you to figure it all out, but it's not, it's never been that way. And I just, I, I get excited about moments where that I get to have, where I'm surprised by the commonality that I have with someone and on paper, it wouldn't even make sense for us to even cross paths. Like, yeah. I love that. And I, and I hope to cultivate that with, with what I make. So yeah. Yeah. I believe in that. One of the things that you ask us to do in the second section is to feel 
you say, so uh, you are still within grace where there is room to feel. So feel, please feel, even if you do not know how the wounds will heal. What is that about feeling? You said that so much of this starts in your head, but I'm hearing it Mm -hmm. so profoundly flowing from your heart Mm -hmm. and that you feel what others feel and you, um, you want people to know that you feel that. But you're asking us to feel these kind of painful feelings. Um, why is that? Because mm. a lot of us don't want to feel those. The whole, I mean, geez, <laughs> the whole point of Netflix is not to feel. <laughs> exactly. That should be the yes. subtitle. Netflix, yeah. <laughs> uh, the primary way not to feel your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just next episode, next episode, you know, just keep going and going and going. I, oh, those words are to myself. They were for someone else, so they were also to myself because I struggle with feeling because, you know, feeling is a space where it's, it's, it's like, okay, it needs to be done. I can't just ignore my heart issues. But at the same time, I've got things to do. <laughs> I've got places to be. Um, And just in my personal experience, it's like, you know, feeling everything or feeling deep emotions, like, yes, it's tough, but it's even tougher when you just ignore it and you just let it pile up and pile up and pile up to the point that your head gets so heavy that it just falls into your heart. And (laughs) I feel like I've just had moments like that in, in my life where it's just like, I try to think it through so much that it gets to a point where my brain's just like, you know what? I'm done with you. <laughs> just gonna leave for a little bit. And, and I'm like, why am I just sitting here staring at the wall? Why am I crying? And it's just like all that stuff built up. So yeah, yeah I just, you know, with the help of therapy, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, like, yeah, this is something that I gotta learn myself how to just stop trying to solve it all and stop trying to fix it all. Like, you know, even right now, you know, there's a lot of people myself included, practicing social distancing and not going places, I still feel this pressure of like, okay, well, where are the opportunities to to be more productive? You know, where are the opportunities to make sure I do this and this, this, this and that? Like, well, when this person was isolated in the wilderness for three years, they created this masterpiece. So what can I do? And even that is just like, or if your body is tired and you physically feel tired, like that's okay too. Like, that's okay. So those are lessons that I'm learning in real time. So to answer, you know, your question as to why I wrote that, just like, please feel, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a call to myself even to just say, please, like, you need to do this. I know it is not easy. It is much easier to just, you know, flip through the channels, to just scroll through Instagram, to just like read all the news articles and just to go back and make sure you're just, just numbing out but no we have to feel (laughs) learning that all the time one of the things that you call us to later on in the poem is turn to the light and be reminded you do not carry these shadows on your own what does it look like for you personally to turn to the light Mm. you said turn to the light yeah the light but yeah 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 i you know, I, I, I use the word light a lot. And, um, you know, I, I come from Christian tradition and light associated with God. And, but if I'm completely honest, um, <laughs> I started using that. It was very literal at first. It was very much so like, okay, there's actual light pouring into the window that illuminates this room. That's where it starts for me because I'm oftentimes writing for people who are um, in places where there's not a lot to do for their situation. They're grieving, they're grieving a loss, they're in trans- transition and they're not getting support. And there's all these different like things where it's like, okay, there's no like step-by-step here for this person. There's no like, do this, do that, do that, and you're good. Oh, and trust God, like, awesome. It's, that doesn't exist. So I think about like, I'm like, okay, I don't know what the, the space looks like for them, but I do know unless they're in that one random part of Northern Alaska, there is a light pouring in. <laughs> There's like this town in Alaska where they don't see light for right. months. 
months in time. Well, I, maybe it's, it's more than one, one town in Alaska. It's like a whole part. Um, but, you know, outside of that pocket of the world, you know, there's light pouring in somewhere. So it started very literal. And then as I'm like, oh, but like it's deeper still. It's like God is present somewhere, somehow, even in ways that are not always tangible. You can't always touch it. You don't know why. It's like, oh, like I, even for someone who's like, I, I believe in God's grace, but I don't even know what it looks like. I don't even know what it means. Like, I don't feel like I can hold it. Like when you look at physical light, it's the same way. It's like light is pouring into the room and yet I can't just like scoop it up in a jar and turn it into a step-by-step and say, here's how, you know. So that's a big word for me that I feel like I'm constantly just living with all the time. Um, because for me personally, and this, the thing is, like, even though I'm writing for other people, it, it's got to be personal. It, it definitely comes from my own story. You know, I, I'm the kind of person who, who does kind of naturally look for shadows and kind of naturally look for like the cracks and things. And I can tend to be really cynical and really like, well, that's not really true or, Oh, it doesn't really work that way. So for me, writing about light um, has just been a way of me even just sort of letting go of my own tendency to try to figure out what God's doing all the time. (laughs) Um, because that's that's real for me. I, I think mm-hmm. I do. Um, you know, as I mentioned, like I grew up hearing scripture all the time. I grew up hearing Bible verses and songs, and encouraging music, encouraging songs all the time. And I found myself in a place where I was like, I can just like quote a scripture and not even think about it. You know, I'm not even like, not even process like what I'm saying and mm-hmm. and the 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 grand mystery that comes with that even so yeah it's it's a lot of I write about that a lot (laughs) that's a lot of words to say I write about it a lot where is the light shining into your life right now in the midst of the challenges and darkness and brokenness and disappointment and grief of the loss the things that we're losing right now Where can you still see the light of the divine shining into your life and bringing hope and healing? Maybe it's in interactions with your family or friends via FaceTime or Zoom or the phone. Maybe the light of the divine is shining in as you're taking in even the words and poetry and the illustrations of Morgan. Are you willing to pause and look for where the light is shining. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is just an excerpt of the inspiring conversation that I had with Morgan Harper Nichols. And there are eight other conversations that you can access for free as well at insporising.com slash peace. It's called Cultivating Peace in Times of Disease and includes the full conversation with Morgan, plus conversations with Reverend Sarah Heath, Stacy Robbins, Bailey T. Hurley, Lori Beth Aldridge, Dr. Lindsay Elmore, Christy Clover, and Kelsey Chapman. You do not want to miss these incredibly inspiring video interviews that help you cultivate peace during this time. I've also made the audio available as well. If you want to download that, the free resource is available at insporising.com slash peace. Mm-hmm.